I'm here at the Terrain Park in Breckenridge, Colorado, and on this edition of In Pursuit of Light, I'm going to be demonstrating some techniques to photograph action sports. shooting action, accurate autofocus and a fast shutter speed are more important than megapixels. While this camera is only 10 megapixels, it sports a 29 point autofocus and fires at 10 frames per second. I'm using the Contra Drawer by Click Elite. This bag is made specifically for ski photography and one of the nice features on it, it has this side zip in the bottom of the bag that allows me to get my camera in and out without having to take the bag off. Hi, I'm Tim. Smiley, nice good to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about what, uh, what you're going to be doing today? I think I'll probably be doing a couple straight airs, then a couple spins. Um, nothing too special, just getting some good shots in. Cool. Well, sounds good. We'll get ready here, and uh, yeah, we'll be ready for when you come through. Cool. I'll start hiking out. When photographing aerial moves, I like to use a wide-angle lens to make the apparent distance between the rider and the horizon as large as possible. In addition to using a wide angle lens, I'm also using manual focus, which I set to be about the middle of the, the ramp. I'm also using uh, manual exposure so that the camera doesn't have to try to figure that out on the fly. Photographing the snow can create a couple of problems. One of those is that because the snow is so white and bright, it creates way too much contrast. The best way to compensate for that is to shoot in raw mode and also photograph early in the day or late in the afternoon when the sun isn't very high in the sky. The other complication of photographing in the snow is the brightness of the snow can fool your camera's light meter into underexposing the scene. The best way to compensate for that is to meter in manual mode and take a meter reading from blue sky or green trees, which are considered neutral tones. Of course, it's always a good idea to double check your histogram because you might need to adjust your exposure a third of a stop or so. The idea of pan action is to pan along with, in the direction that the subject is moving. The trick is to use a slow enough shutter speed to make the background blur, but a fast enough shutter speed to make the subject sharp. I'm going to start here with a shutter speed of a 60th of a second, but you might want to experiment because the faster something is moving or the closer you are to it, the faster of a shutter speed you're going to need. It's really easy to get distracted when you're only looking at what's going on through your lens, so it's important to keep an eye out of what's going on around you so you don't uh, have an accident. One of the best things to do when photographing in a situation like this is to bring someone with you who can just keep an eye on your back and make sure you're not going to get hit by anyone or cause a problem. Another technique to show motion in still photography is to create a sequence of images and put them together in Photoshop. 
What I'm going to do is Smiley comes down this rail as I'm going to pan along with him, although this time I'll be using a much faster shutter speed, probably around 2 50th of a second, in order to make sure everything in the scene is nice and sharp. I'll get a sequence of 10, 15 images, and then we'll assemble those in Photoshop into a long panoramic with, so you can see exactly what he's doing as he comes down the rail. So you're looking at Adobe Bridge right now, and you're looking at the photos I took of Smiley sliding down the rail. This works the same way in Lightroom as it will in Bridge, but I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to click on Tools, Photoshop, and then Photo Merge. If I was doing this in Lightroom, I'd just select them all, right click, and then click Photo Merge. And as I click this, it's going to start Photoshop up. And as it opens the images, it's going to give me some options of how I want to open them. I'm going to go ahead and leave the layout on auto, but what I'm going to do is go down and unclick the box that says blend images together. That's because I have a subject moving through the scene from one image to the other, and I think it's going to be best to blend that manually later. Uh, after I do that, I'm just going to click OK, and it's going to take a few moments for Photoshop to align all these images for us. Okay, as you can see, uh, we're finished blending all these images, we're finished putting all these images together, but they're stacked one on top of the other right now. And what we're going to have to do in order to reveal everything that's going on here is we're going to have to create some layer masks. And what you'll see here, if I turn off this top layer, we'll be able to see the layer that's underneath it. And what I'm going to do is create a layer mask, and I can do that by going up to layer, layer mask hide all, or I can just click this little button down here on the right. And then when I do that, I'm going to select the paintbrush tool, make sure black is selected for the color, and then I'm just going to start erasing that top layer to reveal what's underneath. And if you accidentally erase a little too much, that's no problem because you can easily go back in there and fix that uh, just by changing your brush to white. And I'm going to do that for the next layer create a layer mask, start erasing. And I'm going to keep doing that for each layer until we're done. So as you can see, we're just going to keep go ahead uh, and create these layer masks for each layer and erase a little bit of the time. Make sure to get out in front here. And you can kind of see how the masks paint in and how these layers are laid out. And we'll keep doing this until we've got the last part of the shot done. And then we might need to go back in and touch this up a little. And of course, the very last uh, part of this is going to be creating uh, a crop. And once we go ahead and find a nice little crop that we want there, we'll just hit enter and then uh, a little more cleaning up to do, but you'll get the idea. Hopefully you've learned a few action photography techniques like pan action. These techniques aren't limited to skiing and riding and can easily be applied to other sports. Join me next time in Pursuit of Light. In Pursuit of Light is brought to you by Altitude Fine Art Photography Gallery, featuring fine art prints, gifts, photography workshops, and more, located in Breckenridge, Colorado. Learn more at altitudegallery.com. And by Click Elite Performance Packs for Adventure Photographers. Thank you.